why do affirmations not work and why the law of attraction may not work for you if you say, first of all, I want a loving relationship. And since you want a loving relationship, obviously you're moving away from what? Maybe, well, seemingly unloving. Right? So here it is. I say, okay, so you want a loving relationship. All right? So what do you want? Well, I would like this, and I'd like that, and I'd like this, and I'd like that. And I said, okay, what do you not want? Now, here's the real deal. They write this horrible list of everything they don't want. And each one of these these issues are like 10. These are super 10. I mean, they are just horrible, strong, emotional drivers. And then, of course, loving everybody wants a loving relationship, right? You deserve love. You deserve all this stuff. And, but, you know, when you start thinking about the emotional charge compared to this is like two, right? And you say, I really think I deserve it. But when the wrong person who is right, who matches this model shows up, you start melting and going goo-goo-eyed, and all of a sudden you find out you marry him, right? Which is stronger? If the right guy comes along who's nice or the right girl comes along who's nice and sweet, and you go, man, you're just so boring. Give me a little trauma and drama in my life. <laughs> Isn't that right? Because inside you, you have this great resource. And here's the amazing part is that the people who give this to you, your fathers, your mothers, your ex-boyfriends, you really love these guys. You really do. And, and, of course, the pain attached to this, too, is kind of a weird deal. Remember when I said this little girl had this great ability to worry? And the more she worried, the better she got at it, the more she produced what she didn't want? Became what she didn't want. This is exactly the same way with our pain. You don't want to go there. You don't want to let it go. But you sure in the heck don't want it again. So we have to go back to this past. As you start addressing these unwants, these pains, all of a sudden it's going to be easy to get what you want because first of all, there's no emotional charge in this. And then you start to project, imagine, and feel and then you'll start to get it. Does that kind of make sense? It works the same way, guys, with weight loss, too. You realize that? If you, fall, if you love mashed potatoes and your mashed potato love is about a 10 when mashed potatoes are around, <laughs> and then while those mashed potatoes are around and you talk about weight loss, I'll screw weight loss, I'll give you the potatoes, right? And then next thing you know, you walk by the mirror and you start cursing yourself and make yourself feel like a failure, and, and then all of a sudden you smell the mashed potatoes again, you start slobbering all over yourself, you eat the whole plate, right? You've got to release the mashed potatoes. <laughs> but don't take, I mean, don't take my mashed potatoes away. Don't take my, my Coca-Cola, my Dr. Pepper, because I find love in that. You've got to release that too. So it, it goes back to releasing what you don't want and keep affirming what you do want. So today, what I'm going to cover today is I'm going to cover affirmations and how to do your happy book, your happy journal. Okay, because that's very, very important. If you will do this one simple process, your entire world will change. Especially if you do the peace program. What's the peace program? The peace program is write down every bad experience in your life. And as you write down every bad experience, then we go back to the experience and then what do we do? We tap it away till it has this much power. And once you tap it down to zero, then what you want to do is flop it over to it has a positive, good feeling in it. Now, how many of you, when you went back to start to write this happy memory, all of a sudden you start feeling bad because of that happy memory? Anybody do that? Like you go to a happy memory and then you start to drift off and it makes it feel bad? Okay, let me explain to you why that happened. So you just have this, this happy memory. And of course, this happy memory... Uh, let me explain what happy memories are. First of all, all relationships, every, one, every relationship you're ever in, the relationship will bring you gifts. They'll bring you, they bring you positive gifts and they bring you negative gifts. That means, um, for example, whenever you have an experience with your mother and you, every time you go back and you remember your mother, you start to feel those good feelings, whatever that experience is. That's a gift. That because mother, if she died tomorrow you still have the gift. That means when you go back to that experience, you can feel good and notice that you still have your mother and that experience within you. Does that make sense? All right, that's your gift. But let's say, for example, you've, this guy, for a perfect example, 
He's married for 50 years, and he said this was a wonderful, loving relationship. It's the best relationship I ever had. And he said, and it was so wonderful, but in the last three weeks of her life, she died. I mean, it was, it was not so good. And so it's been, you know, like six months to a year and a half, and he's been super sad, horribly depressed. I mean, he'd cry himself to sleep every night. And I said, well, uh, of course, you know, to understand that in order to have a problem, you've got to be good at it. I said, well, how are you doing this? What are you doing? Well, apparently, he keeps replaying what? The last two weeks are of, of the life. And, and, of course, when you replay these bad memories, what does it do? It gets bigger, and it also overshadows 50 years of great experiences. So I asked him, I said, well, uh, being depressed and sad... And all these emotions, does it do anything? Does it undo it? Does it bring her back? Does it change it? Does it fix anything? Does it solve anything? He said, no. All it does is make me feel bad. I said, okay. So uh, do you have happy experiences with your ex-wife? Oh, I have tons of them. And he said, okay. So here it is. He has good memories, happy memories of his wife. But So he starts to think about this. Happy memory, and it's a, like a 10-plus memory, has good emotion, has a big smile on his face, and then all of a sudden he drifts. And he goes into a bad memory. All of a sudden, this is a 10-plus bad memory. All right, so inside of each one of us, we have good memories and we have bad memories. Isn't that true? So in order to screw up a good memory... You must think of the good memory and shift and drop into something bad to overshadow the good. Now, here's something interesting. He had both memories, good and bad, but he didn't know how to let go of the bad memory. Isn't that correct? So what did we do? We sat and we tapped on the emotions, the experiences, and everything else, and all of a sudden, he started to shift. I said, now, first of all, you realize after she died, she's floating around like a butterfly. She's happy. She's good. Who is it doing this to you? Himself. And so I said, also, when you go back to this sadness about that she passed, does it honor her one bit? Absolutely not. So as we start to tap out these emotions here, all of a sudden, the BM is gone and then every time we say anything about his wife, you know what happens to him? Big smile shows up on his face. Do you hear me? Because every person comes into your life, first of all, they're not yours. Do you realize that? Your mom's not yours, your dad's not yours, your car's not yours, your house isn't yours. You're, everyone who comes into your life, I'm not even yours. I'm not even mine. They're not yours, but they do leave gifts. The question is, which one do we want to hold inside? If you hold the bad memory, guess what do you produce? Bad feelings. Let's say for, say, for example, you're married, and you had a good experience in that marriage, and all of a sudden, I mean, they create good love, and you felt happy, you felt satisfied, whatever this emotional memory is, it's in you, and when they die or when they divorce, they don't take your memories with them. Do you hear me? They're yours to heal you. And if you focus on the good, you start to produce and manifest more good. So, so say, for example, you had a loving experience with your first husband or your first wife. And when you go to that experience, you start to feel good. Keep the good feeling because that's the gift to help you heal. Notice that kind of echoed like it was like God speaking. That's the gift. <laughs> Does that make sense? All right, so, so that's what we want to make sure of. Now, if you drop in to the bad memory, guys, you're going to have to tap it out. You must release that. And then once you release this, go back to the positive memory, focus on it, and realize they are still with you. Your mother's with you, your father's with you, anybody that you've ever experienced, whatever it is inside you is with you. The, but again, when we talked about go back to your past with the negative, the negative is still with you too. That's why we want to go inside and let it go. Because if it's in there and you have reference and you have emotional charge with it, one day you're going to be driving down the road and that stuff's going to hit you in the back of the head and you're going to find yourself in one heck of a mess. You'll be crying, you'll be upset, you'll have no control. You've got to release it. The deal is today you can do it because you have the skills.
Make sense? That's how you screw up a good memory, okay? Notice when you go back to happy memories and you start try, your mind starts to try to go there, notice where you go, tap it out, go back, focus on the good and make it good, okay? Any questions with that? Is that pretty simple?